Hands down, one of the best looking units in the game. Hey guys, Dov here, back with another unit highlight this time. Another Shock Cavalry, one of my favorite unit classes, and Knights of the Blazing Sun. One of the coolest looking units in the game, and on my favorite faction. So, lots of good here. This replay courtesy of Felcon via Turin's Grand Torino Qualifier. This is from one of the earlier rounds. Felcon's Empire versus Energized Lizardmen. So, taking a look at the builds here, Carl Franz leading the way. We've got a Bright Wizard to proc those sweet Kindle Flames with Fireball, uh, Outriders, some state troops up front, including the Sigmar Suns, three Knights of the Blazing Sun, sorry, two rather, and an Empire Knight, uh, great cannons, some spearmen, and a healer. Four Lizardmen, gonna be rocking a Saurus Old Blood way in the back. Very good choice in this matchup on a Carnosaur. We've got some Cold One Riders in support. Col more Cold One Riders over here, including some Spears, Chameleon Skinks, uh, some Red Crests in the front line, along with Source Warriors, a uh, Skink Priest Lore of Heavens with Harmonic Convergence and Wind Blast. Gonna get blasted by Fireball right off the bat. So, Knights of the Blazing Sun, there's a lot going on here. Uh, number one, they are the highest charge bonus of any Empire Cavalry, um, at the cost of having the lowest armor and melee defense, even lower than Empire Knights. We'll kind of highlight them as they move in here. A nice pitched engagement with the Outriders charging. Carl also, Knights of Blazing Sun, gonna follow up with their massive charge bonus. Just absolutely wall up these skinks. Those poor little skink bros are gonna have a really bad day. Nice quick hit and run charge from Felcon. Immediately terrifies away these skinks, and you can see they do have the speed to disengage before the Lizard Cavalry gets there. 66 speed, a little bit faster on the charge, obviously. A few of the unit models might get caught up there, but those Knights of Blazing Sun, uh, they are poisoned currently, of course, because of the skinks. It's making a pretty big difference, but baseline, uh, pretty fast. For especially Empire Shock Cavalry, they're a little bit faster than, say, Empire Knights or Reichsguard. The higher charge fire damage, obviously, is one of their main components. Uh, synergizing with that Kindle Flame very well. Currently, no Kindle Flame active, but we saw that Fireball earlier. And some nice healing being dropped on them as well as they kind of get into a little bit of a pitched engagement. Can't really pull away here, but Carl charging back up and around that Stand Your Ground. Also buffing their melee defense, helping them to mitigate some of that damage. You can see they actually have taken relatively little there, uh, despite all the Overwatch fire and the armor-piercing damage of those Cold Ones. Meanwhile, on the front line, nice quick hit and run from the regular Empire Knights. They're going to continue to support this infantry fight as the Old Blood breaks through over on the right flank. And immediately get back and get at these cannons here. Uh, the cannon crews might be able to disengage and get away, but at, at the very least, the Saurus is, uh, the Old Blood's here exposing himself to some fire from the, uh, <laughs> fireball. And on the Outriders, obviously, as well. With that Kindle Flame active, let's take a look. Looks like the Knights Blazing Sun did manage to get a charge here. One of them getting hammered pretty badly, though, by Cold One Riders, who are one of the other best cavalry units in the game, I would say. Uh, just so cost-effective for what they give you, but Empire Knights and Knights of Blazing Sun together, or sorry, Outriders, <laughs> and Carl, everything all together, kind of taking out these units. So the unit of Empire Knights was able to, or sorry, Knights of Blazing Sun, <laughs> was able to survive. Get a nice Earth Blood there, very timely. Uh, still quite a few unit models left, 33 models and counting, so pretty good stuff. So far, balance power is pretty close, but the, the engagements uh, with the Knights of Blazing Sun against the Cold One Riders have been pretty decisive. So far, both of them almost an XP Chevron already from dealing with those Lizard Cavalry. And one of the reasons this matchup, the, I often have troubles with it, is because of Cold One Riders. They are a very strong unit in this matchup because cost for cost, they straight up beat Empire Knights. Knights of the Blazing Sun, though, with their high charge, can turn that around. And here, where Fel Felcon was able to force favorable engagements, he's done very well. But Carl potentially getting caught out here. He's been caught out a couple times, but Felcon's been able to bail him out here. Knights of the Blazing Sun now rushing in. Harmonic Convergence uh, still active for the Old Blood, just now wearing off there. So... Uh, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a, an interesting engagement. They're having to fight something they're not necessarily meant to, but if they can get a Kindle Flame proc in that high charge bonus, they actually will do some pretty solid damage overall, but at the very least, just holding uh, the Soros Old Blood in place, soaking some of the hits for Carl, and so on is enough here. You can see that the uh, Knights here basically done for. Empire Knights still fighting. The armor and melee defense difference does matter, especially given the difference in terms of cost. Ice of Blazing Sun are considerably more expensive, obviously, but uh, the magic resistance is also something that didn't really come into play too much in this particular battle, but it is very important in specific matchups. 
Um, but very nicely played to both players. Uh, definitely a very fun game. With these two factions, the games, sometimes they can be pretty long, but sometimes they can go very fast if both players kind of have more melee-centric builds. That definitely was the case here. Both Knights of the Blazing Sun picking up an XP Chevron there, getting some beautiful synergy with that Kindle Flame, and dealing the lion's share of the damage to the power units. I mean, obviously, besides Carl versus the Old Blood, which uh, definitely planning a video about Carl relatively soon. But let's just continue the discussion quickly about... Knights of Blazing Sun, and some of the other things they bring to the table. So I talked about the magic resistance, the fire damage, the highest charge, so let's bust out the three kind of standard Empire Shock Cavalry. And you'll see, like I said, even lower armor and melee defense than Empire Knights. So out of the three of these, these are the truest Shock Cavalry, right? These Knights of the Blazing Sun. Uh, they do have just better stats overall, though, including 40 melee attack baseline, which is quite good, and 78 charge bonus is on par with the highest uh, charge bonus cavalry in the game. You know, like your Chaos uh, Knights with Lances are, what, 80? Yeah, oh, 80 charge, so not that far off. Something like uh, High Elves Dragon Princess, I believe, is also, what, 78, 80, 80 charge there? So it's on par with the kind of top tier of Shock Cavalry, and it is the cheapest unit uh, for having that high of a charge bonus, I believe, for Cavalry. I would need to go through and kind of compare, but I want to say that's probably right. Um, yeah, I mean, even like Bretonia, you think about Grail Knights, I think they're also only 78 charge bonus. I say only, but uh, considering you're paying 300 points less for the Knights of Blazing Sun, they can be very cost-effective on the charge and just deal a ton of damage, given the fact that you can increase that by 22% with Kindle Flame against any targets. It's, uh, it turns out to be even higher, right, in practice. They're one of the highest charge bonus, if not the highest charge bonus, uh, cavalry in the game because of that, um, with that specific synergy. So. Uh, given that, you know, it makes sense that they would be a little bit squishier. You definitely have to be on top of your micro if you're going to be using them and getting effective charges and not getting bad engagements. Uh, certainly Reichsguard are more forgiving for newer players, and you can get the fire damage on your other cavalry through other means, like obviously with the Warrior Priest here, rocking that Banner of Eternal Flame will give flaming attacks to everything nearby. So you don't necessarily have to bring Knights of the Blazing Sun to get fire damage, but that extra charge bonus and melee attack and I believe even higher weapon strength too, yeah, slightly higher weapon strength. Let's check the AP values. 13 AP, I think Reichsguard are 12 AP, yeah, so one more AP damage as well. It's just that slight little bit of difference. It can swing some engagements. Likewise, the magic resistance is key in certain matchups. For example, against Bretonia, if you think you're going to be up against Grail Knights, I mean, Demigriff Knights would seem like maybe the more uh, obvious option, but... Knights of Blazing Sun can give you a good traditional cavalry option there. Really, in my mind, the matchup where it matters the most is against Dark Elves. Between Soul Stealer and uh, Slanesh's Harvesters, Doomfire Warlocks, they've got other units with magic damage as well. Can be pretty important. Likewise, against the Wood Elves, of course, the fire damage and the magic resistance are both pretty pertinent, given that all trees, all tree units, are weak to fire and to deal magic damage, not to mention the Forest Dragon. Um, you know, some other power units like the, uh, the Wild Hunters of Kurnos, the Regiment of Renown, Wild Riders. Uh, there's just a lot of units, the Swift Shiver Shards, and even the Hagbane Tips deal magic damage at range. So that resistance does help quite a bit in both of those elfy matchups against the High Elves. Yeah, it'll help against Sisters of Avalorn if they bring them. They're not too common in this matchup anymore, but you do occasionally see them, so... Um, that being said, High Elves do have quite a bit of fire resistance. Like, out of any factions, they're probably the one with the most fire resistance. So there's an argument to be made against Knights of the Blazing Sun specifically there. But uh, there are quite a few other factions which are weak to fire damage. Obviously, Norska. Again, you've got magic damage coming from Famir, and a lot of their units are weak to fire. So Knights of the Blazing Sun end up being very good here as well. Um, Lizardmen is one that I hadn't really thought to use them personally. But it makes sense when I stop and think about it, given that, uh, like I said, this specific unit right here, these 850 cost Cold One Riders, trade so cost-effectively into Empire Knights, it's tough to use them in this matchup effectively. Um, just having the one as a blocking detachment there for Felcon makes sense, but also makes sense just to bring the Knights of Blazing Sun to actually try and win more convincingly in that mobility engagement, and then kind of dominate the battlefield from there. 
So yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, obviously, they're good against, I would say, Skaven. The magic resistance can come in handy. The fire and the extra charge as well. Uh, Tomb Kings, obviously. Vampire Coast, eh, it's tough to make expensive cavalry work against them. Generally, you just want to go for the cheaper ones. Uh, counts, perhaps. Although, yeah, I mean, the magic resistance does help. The fire damage does help. The squishiness is, is can be tricky, especially given that uh, if I check the speed here, I believe they're 71, so Blood Knights are going to be faster than them. A um, little bit tricky there. Warriors of Chaos, again, there's not really any direct synergy, but maybe bring them um, because they do a bit more damage against the Armored Chaos Infantry. Same thing like with Dwarfs, for example, although Dwarfs, similar to Coast, can be tough to make Elite Cavalry work against them at all. Um, but uh, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that one. It's a unit that you will see very, very frequently on pretty much every Empire, not every Empire replay, but a lot of ones, especially up on the higher levels, so... Awesome unit, one very near and dear to my heart, and just looks so, so cool. So, big thanks again for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification every time I upload a new video. You'll be notified. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.